Right. So the other day we have looked into the application versioning. Right. So you generally look after versioning your application when you are going to get your application to release. Right. When the release might be a minor one, a major one, or for a patch one, whatever it might be, we would all look at versioning the application so that the existing behavior of the application shouldn't get affected. Right. So whatever changes you might bring in, it could be new enhancements, new features, or it, it could be for your bugs, fixes that you have done, the defects that you have corrected. Whatever it might be, we bring it as an additional layer, as a new version for the application. Right? So versioning your application means versioning your room sets indirectly. Right, because we, we don't have anything as code here, we call everything as rules. So, we try to increment the version of the rules in a new rule set. Right? So, on this context, we have seen two different ways in which you can version your application. So, what are those? One is a block control mechanism, the other is going to be the skimming process. Two approaches are there block control and skimming. How do you choose from among these approaches is depending upon the type of release that you are planning. Right? So lock and roll works best for minor and patch increments, whereas skimming is best suitable when you are migrating across multiple major versions. Right? So you entirely need a new uh, major version, you can go for the skim. Right? So, in the lock and roll again, we have got three different approaches depending upon the requirement. The first one is do not update your application, okay, where only on the rule set level you get to see the new version, but on the entire application level definition it still holds the same, right? So, you don't get to see any difference on the application definition, but the rule set, yes, it is incremented. Okay. Whereas the second option is update the application to include your new rule set versions. This time, along with the rule set, you are also updating the application. Okay. Whereas the third option is create a new version of my application. This creates an entirely new copy of your application. Right. So along with your rule set increment, you also get to see an another instance of the application available. And at this context, we should make sure that the appropriate access groups are correctly pointed to the designated developers. Right? So you, you might want only a few developers from your team to access the new version. Whereas rest all should still continue working on the older version. We should make sure the access groups are pointed correctly with the appropriate versions. Because for my application now, I, I can have more versions now. Multiple uh, available versions are possible. So, a bit of uh, care to be taken on the access groups level. Because we can decide who should access what version of the application. Okay. So, with lock and roll, again, like I said, it's a separate wizard that completes uh, versioning process. So you can select what all uh, you would like to lock and what all you would like to roll. Always a good practice to lock your current version before rolling out. Okay. And then the second approach for skimming is where you entirely try to eliminate the unnecessary copies of the rules. Okay. So leaving behind all the impure unnecessary copies of the rules are left behind, taking ahead only a single instance, a single copy of each rule into the next uh, major or minor highest version. Right? So you, you get to have only one copy of each rule once you uh, start your process of skimming. Right. So this, this is really helpful when you are dealing with huge enterprise applications when you have multiple versions and a lot of things available. So if you want to remove all that junk or not, it's better we, we try to 
use the skimming process here so that it, it holds like a fresh base copy you will have only one copy of each rule which is as similar to your very first version of o and o and o like that you you will have all the uh, rule instances with just one copy right so i think that's about the skimming again skimming also comes as part of a wizard right so these things are not just uh, you click on it it works no they they are part of a process they are part of a wizard right which we tend to do on an occasional basis or a periodic basis depending upon the releases that you have planned so i think yes that's all about um, versioning so any questions on this are we good with uh, versioning uh, oh, okay so okay uh, for now i have understood but uh, oh, after okay. i practice if i get any questions i'll ask you Sure, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah. All right. So I think then we'll go ahead. So today also we'll be talking about or we'll be focusing more on the rule sets. Right? We'll we'll talk about some design aspects that we have to keep in mind when you are building an application. Right? So we will be talking about some rule sets, something called as validation of the rule sets. Okay, we'll be we'll talk about some check-ins and check-outs. So it's all about uh, managing or designing better applications. Okay. Yeah. So C CSA is is all about just uh, you know uh, understanding the requirement and then just building a logic for it uh, using your data transforms or so-called decision rules or activities, whatever. So you try to fulfill the requirement. there is cwsa is is all about you know, building better applications how well can you build better applications how well can you reuse some stuff or how well you can design something so that it it is more feasible or it is more maintainable so you you start thinking in deeper aspects when it comes to the cwsa right so one such aspect we are going to discuss today is about these Uh, rule sets the types of validations that we are going to have right so when we initially start creating the application okay through the wizard or through your new application creation wizard so a lot of things are already created in the back end i mean the system is taking the responsibility of creating all of these right be it your access groups are created then some work queues are created work groups are created organizational uh, rules are created division rules are created specific rule sets are created yes um access roles are created so the system is taking the responsibility of creating all of these for you earlier when we didn't have this wizard when back in like 7.1 or before we did not have this wizard So it's like everything has to be manually created by ourselves, and then we can create the application. That's how it used to. Be. Okay. Now, as part of this system creating some stuff for us, one of which is going to be your rule sets. Okay. So four rule sets are created when you create the application itself. So remember, what are those rule sets? We we I think we also did see them, right? yeah the application rule set application integration then organization and organization integration right perfect so four rule sets are created by default for purpose by the system right so let us just have a look at them first let us log in So typically, they are your application rule set, application int rule set, organization rule set, and organization int rule set. Four rule sets are created. Good. Now, should I just confine my whole application with those four rule sets only, or can I create my own rule sets also? 
we can create our own rule sets exactly exactly so yes we can go ahead create our own rule sets depending on the requirement so it might be like for a particular requirement or for a particular enhancement i will create a separate rule set or for a particular feature i can create a separate rule set or for each developer on my team they can be part of a separate rule set or for each sprint that i am working on could go in a particular rule set okay? so depending upon the kind of approach that your team or that your project is following you can create n number of rule sets as per the requirement okay? good yes i can create some rule sets of my own fine and as we know what does your rule set consist of it is going to be a list of or a set of rules from which the system is going to pick the rules as and when it is going to execute them okay rule set is a set of rules as simple as it okay. now yes so this is what we call as the application rule sets which are part of your uh, application then you will have some organization related ones and then whatever applications you might want to create for your application yes all those listed in the application rule sets we call them as a rule set stack okay we we call it in the order of a stack because this order is what determines the priority so which rule set should be given priority here so the top priority always goes for your application rule set Right? because that's where most of your rules would reside so if the system is not able to find some rules there then it it goes to the second one so here initially your hr apps is going to be the top of your stack so once the rule is not available there it is popped up so next what becomes top of your stack it is going to be your hr apps int system again checks for the rules in in that particular rule set if found well and good if not this is also popped out so likewise we take it in the form of a stack so that priority always is given to your top of your stack right so we are talking about these uh, rule sets right the application uh, rule sets then your organization rule set and this is how you you will try to prioritize them depending upon the stack right so the order in which you define your stack defines the way for the pega application to understand which rules have to be given priority okay so the one that's on the top of the stack is given the priority and that's how it would continue right now along with these application rule sets we also have something called as production rule sets right so there is a bit of a difference between the and the application one so what is that now and where do i see them 